going on, y'all? Welcome to the Pull Up Experience, the most talked about podcast in Cleveland. Yes, welcome to episode 225 of the Pull Up Experience Podcast Edition. Today we have a very special treat yes. for y'all. Whew. Now y'all know me, and I'm all about target, branding, marketing. And one thing I can say is the major part of it all is your message. So here mm-hmm. I am with a message spitter. Y'all might know it for the music. I for sure know it for the merch. There's so much that's about to keep coming because he is a multifaceted entrepreneur who is still on the rise. But today you guys have the special gift of hearing the message of how you can move from adversity and diversity to prosperity um, and definitely rep. For sure. So, without further ado, I definitely want to introduce you guys to Keontae Smith, also known as Tay Out the Mud. What's up, Keontae? Boy! Hey, <laughs> hey! Thank you, thank you. It's a beautiful day. Here with the most talked about podcast in Cleveland. Thank y'all for having me. We here, man. So, I gotta get started. First of all, are you from Cleveland? Yes, I am. From the suburbs of Cleveland, I actually grew up in Warrensville Heights. So if you're okay. from Cleveland, they're not gonna let you say you're from Cleveland. <laughs> you're from the outskirts. So if you're from anywhere else, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. But if you're from Cleveland, I'm from Warrensville. Okay. okay. So we talking about John Dewey, Randall, all that good stuff. No. So it's actually, if you're familiar with our area, I'm gonna tell y'all my tale of duality. I literally go silver, switch back and forth, but started at 116th. You know, Buckeye area, mm-hmm. and we moved up to Kinsman, then we moved up to Shaker, then we ended up moving to Warrensville when I was probably like 11, and I stayed there until I was probably around 18, 19. Then we started moving back to the city, but my mama did her best to make sure we stayed in some good school. Mm-hmm. So, mom, mom. so, with that being said, uh, from an early age, you are no stranger to kind of getting out the mud and really moving around and not to say no change in nobody's neighborhood, but as you continue to move, you got a little bit better in your neighborhoods. How was that being able to have to continuously conform to new environments, like switching schools, switching the, the cities and the neighborhoods and understanding how to navigate that space? Actually, really, and I'm going to keep on giving credit to my mom because that's the only person I really can give credit to as far as my character go, but I have the privilege and the ability to adapt no matter where I'm at. I've always been a smart individual, so whether it be going to school in the hood, to move into the suburbs, to living in the suburbs, but going to school in the hood, because my mama uh, had us go to Catholic school and things like that, I've always been able to adapt. So it's like, no matter where I'm at, I'm not going to say I fit in, but I know how to maneuver. Okay. Mm. So... Let's get more into your story because it's actually kind of interesting. Not to say nobody, <laughs> you're definitely interesting. But uh, let's get more into that. How did you move into the idea of I'm going to be my own man, start this, uh, whether it's music or entrepreneurship? Um, and music is a, a business in itself, so let's not discredit that. But how did you get to that point in life? Is that something you always wanted to do? Well, actually, I've always been a fan of music. Like, I remember ever since I was 10, 11, 12 years old, my mama would tell me to do the dishes. You know, as a kid, you you don't want to do no chores or nothing like that. But I'd go grab that iPod, throw my headphones in, and I'd just zone out. And then it'd be me and my music all night. So I always had a love for music. But when it comes to doing music myself, it's actually a deeper message. So back in 2017, um, my cousin, R.P. Maine, he died. Um, he kind of showed me what out the mud as a lifestyle really mean. Yeah. So it's like I was 19 when he passed away and he did music for a little bit and he did a lot of YouTube videos in his younger days. So with me seeing that, it's like, dang, man, my cousin gone. But if I ever want to hear his voice, I got a way to access that. So in my head, I'm really in love with immortality. So when I think about all the things that I do, it's like I want to leave a footprint here for whenever I go. I know it's kind of morbid, but everything I start doing is like, okay, I know my physical body ain't forever, but if I create these products and I create this music, my people and anybody that's connected to me, they can access to me whenever through my art. So that's how I started music. Leaving a legacy to you through everything the fancy messes up, bro. Now, building on that, um, with 
the message. You said he really taught me about the lifestyle of out the mud. Can you expound on what that is? Yeah, so I tell people out the mud is from adversity to prosperity. So when we hear out the mud, we always associate it with the urban community, which is where it's really popular. But if you, anybody that took something from nothing, to something, you getting it out the mud. So I don't know if anybody ever literally got stuck in the mud, but it just happened to me last year. I got my car stuck <laughs> in the mud. And it's like, when you in there, man, it's you trying to go forward, you're trying to go backward, you're trying to go to the side, you're trying to go to the side, and there's nothing you can do to get out of here. So I kind of relate that to a bad position or a bad environment, you know, everybody mud is different. You know, for me, it was poverty. For a lot of people, they might not struggle with poverty, but they never fit in where it was at. Or um, they had character or personality issues that they had to deal with. They might have had a messed up, dysfunctional family, you know what I'm saying? So um, actually getting out the mud, I called somebody and they came and used their truck to pull me out the mud. So I kind of used that as like a parallel to where you know you can fix everything like once you out the mud you can maneuver you can move however you feel but you still gonna remember that time like dang i was just stuck so out the mud to me mean nothing to something you know fixing whatever your situation is that's against you to using it to your advantage like okay i've been through the mud but now that i'm out i'm clean now i'm gonna do what i do but i still remember what that mud was like yeah. Okay, that brings me to my next question. Then we'll let y'all have some. But okay, um, <laughs> my next question, because I'm interested. Mm -hmm. um, we um, in Cleveland have a big population of those who are going through the process of reentry. So a lot of times, especially in our urban communities, regardless of race, when it comes to your situation, as far as um, having a background um, and not always being able to pass somebody's background check, depending on what it's about, um, that could be a part of their mud story. Are you open to talk about your mud story? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So those for don't who the, for those who don't know, I put it out on the table. I ain't scared. They say when you're truly free, you got nothing to hide and nothing to prove. So I don't care what nobody think about Time me. Up, so. But I am. <laughs> <laughs> a three-time convicted felon, and thanks to God, I ain't never been to prison. Now, I know that sounds fishy, but the mm. only reason I ain't go to <laughs> <my prison. laughs> is because of COVID. Oh, so wow. I caught my first case in 2018. I was 20 years old. You know, you got to be uh, 21 years old to legally be able to carry a firearm. But the things I was involved in at the time had me feeling like I had to protect myself. And it was so fluke high. I caught my first case. We'll get into that if you want to. But um, all three of my cases is for Ron Ron with that bah. So <laughs> <laughs> improperly handling the firearms in the motor vehicle. That was my first case. And I caught two cases in 2020. So while everybody having this free money and enjoying their life, having the parties of the century, I was in jail for a little bit. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So um, I got through that. I got probation for everything. Like I say, COVID hit. So, you know, instead of locking me up, because I was hard-headed, you know what I mean? It was like, you know, we're trying to get everybody out of jail, so we're not going to send you there. You know what I mean? So, yeah. got through all of that, finished all my probation. And a tip for y'all that's going through that, if you on probation, I know y'all feel like, can we cut something? Yeah. <laughs> I know y'all feel like fuck them people. They gotta get it in blood. Parent, but the bro, only bro, way you gonna get off the probation is if you fulfill the terms, bro. Pay your fees. Do whatever little bullshit community service they want you to do. I went to a church. Thank you, Miss Janet. And you know, get that, get them people out your face, bro. Because the quicker you. Um, to feel a lot of obligations, they'll let you off. All they really want is some money. I'm not going to lie to you. Mm. All they really want is some money. So, with me dealing with all those cases, you know, I finished all that stuff, but it do still follow me to this day. You know, it's certain opportunities that I apply for that uh, they look at my background and things of that nature. But it's like, with that, all you got to do, and it's pretty much with anything, is be resilient. Mm. So, uh, I just learned something from... Um, a man that I watch a lot called Myron Golden is something called the SW rule. And I use it for sales, but I also use it in my life because I know a lot of people have acceptance issues. But if you adopt the SW rule, you'll be cool. So that's some will, some won't, so what, someone's waiting. Mm. So that means every time you oh, get no. turned down. <laughs> yeah. Say that one more time. Say that one more time. For some time, will, <laughs> some won't, so what, mm. someone's waiting. So that means don't get 
caught up or try to bank on one opportunity. You get out here, you make as many opportunities as you can put yourself in front of, and eventually you're going to come across somebody that's either understanding or they need what you offer that bad that they don't care about your background. Mm -hmm. And that's how I'm still prospering that's and good. advancing to this day. You know, I don't let my mistakes define me because I know I'm still a good person, you know, and the only way I'm going to be able to prove myself to you is to get in your environment. So if some people strictly got a wall up, don't take it personal. You know, that's one of the four agreements. They might have let a felon around before and they fucked him over, so they forever jaded. That's not your problem. That's their problem to deal with. You missed out on the blessing. So be resilient, be resourceful. That's the advice I got for re-entry people. You, There's plenty of felons. You wouldn't know it unless you asked them, but I wear mine on my sleeve because I want to be an example of, you know, I got three felonies. I've been through poverty. I got my license suspended before I even got them. I got Man. shot when I was 17 years old. You know, these are all things that I was supposed to, if I let them, keep me in the moment. But I'm Man. still here today, I'm still thriving, still progressing. So that's what I'm all about. Okay. You know, let's go. Now, okay, you know. Go ahead. One, you, la one last one. One last one. Go ahead. Do you think you do that? Um, <laughs> last question, but go ahead. <laughs> So, um, I want to know, okay, I love the message for sure. And when I buy, especially uh, smaller brands, I'm big on the messaging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I buy bigger brands, I buy the name. When I buy um, big brands that have yet to amass as big of a success that they are, because I wouldn't call you a small business. Um, but I'm a growing business. Exactly. So, when I uh, support those brands, I always look for what they're about. And... I, it's less about the cotton and the material, even though I do love a good, because I like that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but uh, I love the message. So how did we move to actually being in merchandise and say, okay, this is my land. I'm going to roll with this. Yeah, Come so on. everything <laughs> that uh, applied to me as far as business goes, I just tried it out. And then the feedback I got from it allowed me to keep going. So when I started music, like I said, it was for a deeper reason. I wanted to create something that lasted longer than me. But, you know, I'm looking at everybody else. I'm like, dang, if you really pay attention, a lot of these people that make music, they make money from their music, but everybody who in it knows streams don't really pay you that much. Mm -hmm. You're getting off of shows and you're getting off of merchandise because if you develop an audience, they want to feel like they're a part of you. Right. What's another way that somebody can feel a part of you outside of just hearing your voice? Here, put this on your body. So... When I started doing the music, I created my logo, you know, because I'm thinking it is minded. Once I got that logo, I slapped it on the shirt, you know what I mean? And then I started wearing it around people and everywhere I'm going, where you get that from? Where you get that from? Where you get that from? Light bulb. This is me. You want one? You can buy one right now. I cut you a deal. You really want it? So when I start seeing it, uh, I start seeing people around me taking pride. And my brand, I'm like, oh, man, I got to keep going with this. You feel me? What else can I put my name on? Started with the T-shirts, went to the hoodies, went to the jogger suits, went to the foam cups, went to the magnets, went to the stickers, went to the anything I could put my name on, I'm putting it on there. So it was really started as um, me just expressing myself. When I seen the feedback I was getting from, I'm like, okay, let me expand on this because this is a genuine interest people mm -hmm. ain't just saying it because they don't know it's me yeah. they just know what they see you know what see, I mean? yeah. then when i tell them it's mine that sparked a whole nother conversation like you really made that like my graphic designer made it but it's me though <laughs> so yeah that's how i got started with the merchandise I so should we stay in the same vein because i want to talk about those first iterations because we all have been somewhere right and uh and i know a lot of times that the material, like the first iteration, might be a wrong material or might be wrong where they put the graphic and whatnot. So let's talk about the beginning iterations of you starting your brand. So actually, really, like I say, I start slapping it on the shirt. So um, I'm in the mall with a girl I was dealing with at the time, you know, and, you know, as men, we probably only got one person to vent to. So I'm telling her all my dreams, all my aspirations. You know, I end up sending my logo to her phone. So we in the mall one day, you know, I walk off, I'm doing what I do, she do what she do. Uh, you know, where you at? You know, she I'm at the t-shirt booth. I'm like, all right, you know, could have bought that from a graphic tea store, but whatever. And I walk up and I see her, he got my logo on the screen, about to print it. So then I see him, he press it up right in front of me. So before this, I never paid attention to how clothes is made. You know, we buy 
name brand. You know, right. we wearing Nike, we wearing Jordan, mm-hmm. we wearing whatever we wearing. You know, we just we not, we don't think about how it's made. We know we got it on our body. You know, but when I seen them take a plane, a blank, and make it into something personal, I'm like, dang. If he could do that, I could do that. Mm. If Habib did it, I could do it. <laughs> you feel me? So I seen that. I started looking it up. You know, I looked at the brand that he had, and he took it serious because I wasn't buying that expensive machine. Mm. But I seen one that was in my price range. You know, so and it was crazy when I looked at it. I'm the type of person whenever I come across an idea. I try to bring everybody in on it. So I'm talking to my brother like, man, we need to go in on the heat press. We need to go in on the heat press. We need to go in on this. We need to go in on that because I'm always trying to collaborate on something. Yeah. And he just, he, he backed out on me, backed out on me one day. And it's like, man, I'm going to do it myself. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So end up cashing out on it myself, got it to the crib, started doing my own pressing and things of that nature. And before, in between that, I had mm-hmm. somebody, shout out Ed 24-7, Another Cleveland business. She used to charge me to do my piece by piece, but once I seen what she was doing and what she was charging me for, I'm like, man, if I make, if I pay her to do five of these, I can get my own equipment and do it myself. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So start doing it like that, and then eventually moved up. You know, start getting in a circle of people with their own brands. Start getting the manufacturers, and that's where we at with it. Mm. So I know, I know we've tried. I will say, like, we must say I've tried, and, and let me tell you this. So let me tell you about our uh, my our, our little time to make some uh, merchandise. So the first time I washed the hoodie, lettering came right off. Yeah, no, I like, probably didn't leave it on there long enough. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I mean. So, what advice would you give somebody who would like to start their own brand? That, like the mistake or the stuff that you that you've seen that when doing your own merchandise that that you can help them. Uh, Overcome the Oscar. Yeah, so my main thing is, and it don't matter what lane you is, study what you're trying to do. Mm. So if you just go into it blindly, of course you're going to fail. You know, like if you're trying to play basketball, but you don't know the rules, you're going to lose. So the best thing you could do is find somebody else that's already doing what you're doing and pay attention to them. I am a YouTube scholar. Uh, <laughs> looked on there, seen everything I need to do. Okay, how do I do this? How do I uh, work the graphics? How do I do that? You know, and I figured it out. But I consider myself a smart individual. So another thing I want to say is if you can't do it yourself, find somebody within your price range to do it for you. Everything is not for everybody. Mm. I'm very creative when it comes vocally. You know, I can sell water to a well. I can sell salt to a snail. I can sell... I almost said something crazy. <laughs> but, you know, I'm very good with my words. But when it comes to visually, I'm not that good of an artist. So mm. what do I do? I find a graphic designer to bring my vision in my head to life. I can't draw for nothing. Y'all all remember them cars we used to draw in class <laughs> with the big rims. My drawings still look like that to this day. <laughs> so if you not good at something, find somebody that is, and you partner with them. It's, it's, it's really, I think we make things harder than what they gotta be. If you're not good at it, find somebody that's good at it and pay them. Cause you obviously see that valuable cause you can't do it yourself. That's, so, that's pretty much, you know, study, pay people. No, that's good. And then I, I want to ask you about because it sounds like you have the science of how to sell now. <laughs> what pointers would you give somebody who's trying to who who's trying to sell themselves their brand and their merchandise? So, um, really, you got to do what you believe in. So, uh, when I used to be in sales for other people, I think I wasn't successful because I didn't fully believe in it you know what i mean it's like when people when you're serious about what you're talking about people can feel that mm. like, you know everything is energy that's good so if you walking up to me and you're like you know bro you know, <laughs> my t-shirt i'll be like wow mm. you know and if you ain't got nothing to tell them as far as your why and what you selling if you if you don't believe in yourself how you expect somebody else to believe in it so it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though I do like my designs and I do got some decent designs, you know what I mean. A lot of the sales I made wasn't because of how good my clothes was. A lot mm. of the sales I made was because people could feel my vibe, my aura, my energy, and they like, man, who is this dude? I want to put money in his pocket for some reason. Yeah. I don't know what it is about him. I want to pay him. 
So when you provide them some a reason to pay you and it's actually valuable, the things I'm giving you, you can put it on your body or you can put it in your car or you can put it in your house and it's going to be there for as long as you leave it. So, you know, believe in yourself. You know what I mean? That's the biggest thing I can say because if you don't believe in the value that you bring in people, not only is you shorting them because you're just trying to get a sale, you shorten yourself because all the time that you wasted trying to get these people to believe this BS that you're trying to sell them, mm. you could get something that you actually believe in and it's going to pay you forever. You only going to get that dollar one time if it's Fugazi. But if people see that they really getting value from you, they really going to come back and get it again and again and again. You could even, it's a, it's a secret, but. Come on, let's all, let's all the secrets. Come on. You can mess up. When you got good customers, bro, mm -hmm. they don't care about your mistake. They care about how you handle it. So if somebody come to your detail of business and you ain't clean the carpet how they wanted it to, now if you say, well, oh, you already paid me, bro, you chalk, you know, I'll see you next time. You're not going to get them, but if you messed up, you make it your business to straighten your hand and people see how you handle that, they're going to come back to you because that's integrity. You care about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> So, say, what would you say has helped to really get your brand out there? Besides being your own walking advertisement, has it been word of mouth? Has it been social media? What's been like your outlet to really get your brand out there? Yeah, so it's really been a mix of both, a mix of everything. So, like I say, I like to put my name on everything that I could get it on, and everywhere I go. Uh, you know, bring myself up. So like you say, being a walking billboard, but making sure I get my merchandise into the right places with the right people, you know, that bring things as well too. So with social media, I'm trying to be more consistent with it because it's like it is a game at this point. You know, back in 2016, 2017, it was easy to get out to the audience that you want to go to. But now, you know, you got to fight through the algorithm. And the reason they make it difficult, or I ain't going to say difficult, but make it strategic and because that's how they make their money. There's mm. people coming to them every day, paying them to get these same eyeballs that you're trying to compete for for free. They paying for that. So that's yeah. the reason why social media takes strategy. So I try my best to do word of mouth. Like I say, I say it as many times as I can. Any people that I do do business with, I do contact. I just try to make sure I give them the best experience. And then, you know, I heard uh, another entrepreneur say every person that you touch is five people because if you do good business with them, that make them want to talk about you. But if you do bad business, you might be affected 10 people. You know what I mean? So everything, yeah, everything I can get my hands on, I'm trying to push my brand. And shout out to you. So everybody knows we're official sponsor of the Pink and Black Honor. And one of our events leading up to that was the Minority Network and Resource Expo. And I remember the pivotal moment during the panel discussion where you did stand up in the middle of the aisle and yes, shot did. your shot at the full <laughs> roll. Literally was like, hey, my name is Tay. I am doing this right now and I'm still trying to do more. Who want to do something with me? What? How did you get the courage to do that, first of all? Shameless plug. So one thing I heard is, you know, do it afraid. So I'm not a shy person, but I still get anxiety when I'm talking in public. So, mm -hmm. you know, you just you really too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, you know, you gotta really fight it for real, for real, because you're gonna miss a hundred percent of the shots that you don't take. So when I really get into an environment when I can touch a lot of people, it's like you don't know who looking for you, you know what I mean? And until you present yourself to them, you're just another person because ain't nobody no mind reader. So whatever on my heart, how I'm feeling, that's how I'm gonna express it, you know? Shame this plug. And I even apologized to them after that because I felt like I crashed with them. <laughs> Do you know it did them stand out, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's like, who oh, this dude right here? Yeah. But you know, that's that collaboration y'all keep on talking about. Like, this is where I'm at in my journey. I see all of these beautiful people that look like me. Mm -hmm. I can't read y'all minds either. So if there's anybody in this room that's trying to do this with me, you know, let's lock in. And I actually did meet a couple people that came up to me after that, and we locked in. Okay. So, you know, like I said, you're going to miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So you might well take it because, you know. Now, I know uh, personally you have ambition, um, to say the least. What are some of the things that you look to do in the future? You talking about short term or long term? However you want to tell them. Okay. 
So for the short term is to get from where I'm at to be opulent as possible. So I want to go for the lifestyle I'm living, which I'm doing decent, y'all. I'm blessed. But <laughs> I really want to put it in a phase. And it's not for them. It's for me and my family. But I do want to be that, uh, that image that people can look at and tell, like, dang, man. He was right there, right, mm. right there. And his whole process, he been documenting it though. Like mm. he said he was gonna do that and he really did it. So my short term goals is, like I said, to get from where I'm at to undeniable, you know what I mean? And then for my long term, y'all gonna have to clip this because I'm about to go to my vision board to tell you what I want. You okay. gotta put it in the universe, yeah, you know what I mean? You got to put it in the universe. So. When it's all said and done, I will have achieved these things. I want to make $300,000 a year. That's $25,000 a month, $5,800 a week, $825 a day. I want to weigh 185 to 200 and be physically fit. And ain't y'all business what I weigh right now. <laughs> okay, I want to help others obtain knowledge and inspire people to pursue and capture a lifestyle they truly love. Because mm. I feel like once I get... To the top of the mountain, I ain't trying to be there by myself. You know mm. what I mean? I want to own a five bedroom house somewhere nice. I don't know if it's Florida, California, Texas. I might go to Utah. We used to not here in Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> nice weather. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Clean the nice. Clean the nice weather. Clean the nice. Certain days. Every, yeah. It's too yeah, bipolar for me. And, and I'm born in the winter, but I hate the winter time. Like, we, one of the only places I know where you're going to get all four seasons in one week. So don't take that as a dish, y'all. Y'all know who love us like us. Yeah. But um, yeah, I got an assortment of cars I'm gonna get. I want to own 30 income generating properties because you know you gotta have them assets. And I want to own a commercial building or a bit space, uh, so where I can create content and invite people there instead of coming to my house. And yeah, so you see that's all on my vision board. Oh, he got a real vision board, dog. Yeah. Send that to me because I'm gonna hold you accountable. Sure. Mm. Sure. And I got my short term goal. Tay, too, before you send that, make, I want to warn you, brother. You're going to hold your counters. I will. Do y'all know who I'm with, bro? I'm with, everybody been calling her her real name today. But whenever I tell people about her, I'm with Beneficial Bay, bro. Like, I don't, I don't know. If, no, for real. Because I really like what she got going on. on. She one of the ones. Like, if you know, she one of the ones, bro. So, you know, I'm happy to be here. I ain't going to. Oh, Y'all yeah. follow Beneficial Bay right now. Yeah. Get some spice for your life. <laughs> All right. All right. Now you mentioned men being a mentor at some point, um, you know, in your vision. So do you currently have someone that is a mentor for you as you know you're steadily learning, growing? Yes, I do. I do, I do. Shout out to Luke Mont Patrick, he a dude from Philly. Um, it's crazy. I always say that I'm happy to grow up in the era that I grew up in because I feel like we was the last era to know what it's like to go outside and play yeah. and flip through the CD book to have to find your views. Oh, that's facts. And, I said I'm going to you know, ride your bike, you know, come in at the street light, and, you know, we had to actually communicate and go outside. But when I was probably 13 or 14, you know, we got MySpace, we got Facebook popping off, we got all of these different things. I remember Planet, baby. Like playing out here, out here. He's showing his age, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't no brand new that old. Y'all lost me. He lost me. Oh. I, my space is in there. I was like, I was like, oh, I'm going to be like, oh, my God. 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 But we lucky enough to live in a generation to where, you know, you can literally have access to the rest of the 8 billion people in the world or mm. however many people on the internet, you know, and they can be in a totally different place, but y'all can talk as if y'all are face to face. So I get a, um, I get a follow and a comment one day and I see him comment on my post. I don't know how he got there, but you know, I ended up looking at his page and everything he was doing on there is some things I wanted to, to do myself. You know what mm. I mean? So, you know, end up, DMing him, chopping it with him, you know, seeing what's going on. Then he ended up offering me his mentorship program. And mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I ain't take offense like a lot of people. Like, dang, I thought we had a real connection. You go charge me, bro. But it's like, when you pay, you pay attention. So, mm -hmm. uh, ever since I walked in with him, you know, gave him my resources, he's been full-fledged with me. So, I do have mentors. I got a lot of people that I follow that 
don't teach me, but they teach me indirectly, Ooh, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Shout out Beyond Win, shout out Akeem Africa. Come on, Shout man. out, you know, there's a lot of people. Myron Golden, mm -hmm. David Shans, you know, it's a lot of people that I learn from daily, but as far as a personal mentor, that's who I got. Okay. That's so let me ask you this. Uh, as a uh, entrepreneur, what keeps you motivated, bro? Because mm -hmm. in the days where things sell ain't selling, and when days ain't, ain't like, they, like you want them to go, what keeps you motivated? So what keep me motivated is um, looking at things outside of the money. And I also take accountability for everything that's going on. So a lot of people, they blame it on the universe as to why things ain't doing this. But whenever I had them slow seasons, I'm like, okay, what am I not doing? Or what can I make better to make this do that? You know what I mean? Okay, maybe I can't make no sales right now, but I can make this post. Maybe I can do this. Maybe I can structure this right mm -hmm. the right way. So when I do okay. have a customer come through, their experience will be this much better. So it's like, okay, when you're not in a championship game, which when you sell it and everything like that, you still got to practice. So I take those times to be like, okay, what can I do to make myself better today? What are some key things that I can actually track to make myself better and then it's like once you do that it's like okay it ain't just busy work i'm actually getting better and better so that's what i do just see what i can do that's not mainly the business how can i personally develop mm -hmm. how can i develop the business a little bit more you know what i mean it's it's always something to do like if you're bored it's your fault so mm -hmm. yeah because your pull-up game strong so i have seen Skr -skr! a lot of <laughs> That is so So he's on Sunday. Yeah, you're great. Here's our women discussion. What I love about you is you will show up and then you show up with intention. So what are some tips you would give somebody when it comes to, first of all, just going to an event, like which ones to go to and which ones not to. But on top of that, uh, to make sure that it's purposeful once you're there so you don't feel like you wasted your time and or money. Yeah, so um, mainly, and I'll give y'all a little hack, if you one of them people like I was that be in the house, because I'm a people person, but I enjoy my solitude. Facts. So basically the whole 2023, I was in the crib for real, for real, just recalibrating and getting myself together. Something just clicked in my head, though, like, dang, it could be a million dollars across town, and I ain't going to never get it because I'm in these four walls. And I'm like, okay, let me get out here. And one of them things that helped me get out there was an app called Eventbrite. So if y'all ain't got it, make sure y'all download a bank bank. I wanted the people like I'm, you know, I'm saying well, I, I really do what I want to do when I want to do it. So it's like whenever I'm bored, I'm like, okay, what can I pull up to tonight? And I'll pull up event right and be like, okay, let me show up here. Let me pop up here. Just look for things that you would be interested in. A lot of the times, the names of the event will let you know what's going on. So if you know it's somebody bar mitzvah, you ain't got no business in there. <laughs> Hey, I'm but if, you, you, know but if you see, turn up, Black Planet. <laughs> hey, y'all see my Black Planet? It was in time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Joe, just look up whatever you into, whether it be real estate, whether it be financial literacy, yeah. whether it be dancing, whether it be yoga. Try to look up events, and then once you start going to these events, plug into the people that's there. Because the people that are there, a lot of times, whether they purposeful or not, they might have something else coming up. And once you lock in with them, it's like, okay, I see they doing this. 80% of the people that's on the internet put everything on there. So you're going to see where people at and where people going. And the best mm. thing you can do is to prepare for these events is um, gain clarity on who you are and what you do. So within a 30-second time range, people can figure out who you are and what you do. Right. And what they need to save your number as in a phone. Mm -hmm. Another networking hack. Download the app Blink. B L I N Q. I got my business card as a widget on my home screen. So if I'm ever out of business cards, people just pull out their phone, which 90% of people have their phone. Mm -hmm. Just scan and all my socials, all my phone number, everything pop up. You lock in, woo, 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 and then just, yeah, lock in, man. So you said how to go to these events and not waste your money. Know who you are and what you offer. Know what you're looking for. And, you know, be accessible. Be ready to do business. So, yeah. So, Thank you. Good. So, let me ask you this. So, it is, we are men's mental health month, right? Mm -hmm. And a question I want to start proposing to our men is support systems. We all need them. So, out to the team, by the way. Who or what is in your support system circle that helps you stay grounded or whatnot in these, uh, these times that we're in? 
Yeah, so it's crazy you said that though, cause I don't tell a lot of people this, cause they got their own uh, connotations and their own misconceptions about it. But I am a person that deal with bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. So for one of the old, for all y'all that don't know what it is, bipolar disorder used to be called manic depression. Mm -hmm. and what that mean is, you know, you got this, you got that. Everything about me is duality. Like it's literally yin, yang, mm -hmm. black, white. I am two people essentially. Mm -hmm. You know, it depend on what day you catch me on. <laughs> but the manic side is when you all the way up, you like the energizer bunny, can't mm. not stop you. You know, you might frivolously spend money. You might just, you're the happiest person to be around. You're the life of the party. And then you got depression. And when you're going through that depression, it's something that really can't nobody bring you out of. You know, everything is blurry. Mm. Everything is like a dark cloud. Everything is just, ugh. you know what I mean? So one of my triggers is stress. So one thing I try to do to deal with the bipolar depression is keep my stress low. So when you say support system, I am lucky and blessed enough to have a family that care about me That's and I can reach out to that I can talk to whenever I can. Thank God I still got both my parents. I don't talk to my mama more than my daddy. Um, my dad got nine kids, so I got a lot of siblings I can reach out to. Um, and get a therapist. I have a therapist. And one of the things that made me mad about therapy is like, man, why well, I'm telling this lady all my business, but she can't tell me nothing about herself. Mm. So, you know, that's a HIPAA law, because, you know, if you go bonkers, they don't want you going crazy on your therapist. But when I finally locked in and realized, like, dang, this is strictly a place where I can outlet what's going on with me. And it's a person that's, whether they get paid or not, they at least act like they genuinely concerned. Because, you know, we, when you build up so much pressure, bro, you can explode. Mm. And that's not healthy for nobody, bro. And the people that are your support system says, your family says, your girl or whatever, you don't want to constantly, I think I'm stealing from y'all panel, mm -hmm. but you don't want to constantly, don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, you spend though. Yeah. You spend that family. But you don't want to make them your sound of board for everything. You know what I mean? It's not their responsibility. Even though if they care about you, they love you, they want the best for you. Yeah. But don't nobody want to hear no complaining 99% of the time I talk to you. Bro. Why every time I pick up the phone, you got a problem? Like, why, why we can't talk about solutions? Mm -hmm. So your therapist is probably one of the only places you could go to, and it's unbiased, it's unfiltered. You know, you got somebody that's strictly, intently listening to what you got off. That's good. So at the end of that, it's like, okay, you know, beneficial base said, well, she said she won't say it again. I'm going to say it. <laughs> she said the only reason, only way to get her to stop talking when she's going up is to make her feel heard. Yeah. And I'm the same way. Uh, how I put it, I control the energy of the room I'm in. So if I'm feeling the type of way, everybody gonna feel this type of way. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. So <laughs> I try to get that off with my therapist. So when I do go around other people, I'm whole, I'm healthy. It ain't nothing bottled up in my brain. It ain't nothing that's, ooh, I can't wait to, it ain't none of that because I, I get it off my chest. So mm. therapist, and thank God I got a family. That's what I, I seen this post today was talking about uh, unfortunately for us as black men, too often we hold our emotions in, we don't get a chance to express ourselves. So these things we hold internally have a way of coming out one way or another. You have the diabetes, you have the hypertension, you have these things that, if we think about it, they're rooted in something. We just gotta do our due diligence, like I said, get a therapist and have people who we can talk to about the issue that we have, that we as men think that we hold them in, we a man about it or whatnot. So thank you for sharing that by the way, bro. Yes, you know, sir. So. Thank you. Y'all. The quicker you, you said I can cuss, right? Yeah. The quicker you stop giving a fuck, the quicker you will be happy. Parental advisory. <laughs> the quicker you stop giving a fuck, the quicker you will be happy, bro. The reason you walk around with all that stress bottled up is because, man, right. if I show my emotions, they ain't going to think I'm a gangster no more. Man, if I tell my girl the truth, I really want to go do this, she ain't going to love me no more. Okay, bro, if your true intentions is to not be a monogamous man, then... You wasted her time. So why would she accept you for what you is? Mm. Tell the truth, bro. Stop giving a fuck what other people think. The sooner you do that, you will find your tribe. It's 8 billion people on this planet, bro. Studies and statistics say you got 25,000 people of the opposite sex that's compatible with you. So imagine how many people are the same sex, no, no homo sapien, that, you know, your tribe is out there. So the quicker you... Take off this mask and stop acting like everybody else. You'll be able to find some people that really rock with you for who you is instead of who you trying to be. Fuck these people, bro. 
Who 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 in the shower with you? Who going in the casket with you? Come on now. Stop caring. Be considerate though. Yeah. You're entitled to your opinion. You're entitled to your opinion, but ain't nobody obligated over here. <laughs> so I, 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 this is my last question I want to ask you what do you feel like the biggest misconception people have with being an entrepreneur that you know what I'm saying like you said on Instagram we see all this highlight reel but we but they don't know the real of it all what do you feel like the thing that they're missing that they don't see um the thing I think they're missing is um and like you say a lot of the ideas we get about entrepreneurship is coming from the internet mm -hmm. so you got to think about how much time you're spending on the internet it's 24 hours in a day and you probably spending i just put a time limit on my phone if you can go to your settings go to your own um, screen time i suggest you put a limit on these social medias if you're not making money from it right, i put a two facts. hour limit on mine not making money. i'll be yeah. passing it every day but this amount of time that you spend it on Instagram, you're not literally on there 24 hours a day. So you're not realizing that these people that you watch it, when they're not on there, they're really working. You get up and go to your job every day because you know whether you're there or not, there's still going to be a business there. So when you become an entrepreneur, you are that business. So, you know, people have business hours for a reason. You know, you might catch um, whatever your favorite restaurant is from nine o'clock in the morning to five at night, but there's still people that gotta close when the restaurant closed. Mm -hmm. And there's still people there to prepare to open the restaurant before it even opens. So it's people in that building before they turn that sign on and open them doors. So you gotta be the same way. This is a daily thing. Mm -hmm. Until you build a business that you can walk away from, I heard that at the Minority Resource Networking Expo, mm -hmm. but until you build a business that you can walk away from and know that things are either going, you know, still be how they are or increase, you don't deserve to be away from your business, bro. Your business, a lot of people look at it as their baby and it kind of is. You not about to leave that baby at home by itself until you know, he know to call me or call the police if it's an emergency. He know not to open that door, no matter who it is, because I got a key. You're not about to leave that child until you know that they're responsible enough to not kill themselves. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you didn't, you don't deserve to leave your business because your business can't uh, stand itself while you're not while you're not there. So that's one of the misconceptions we got. We think it's just a fun thing or a when we feel like a thing. Oh, you got to do that whether you want to or not, or unless you want to join the entrepreneurship graveyard with all these people screaming Ooh. about what they do. And they really don't do it, bro. You Al Bundy. You don't do that no that, more. Oh, for sure. Entrepreneur. <laughs> shit, graveyard. Yeah. That's well, that was a t shirt. Yeah. And they're not going to It was going to be a collaboration. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like that, though. Yeah, don't, don't be part of the graveyard. Yeah. And they're not dead, bro. There's people in the graveyard still living. Mm. Wow. That's good. Well, I love that Al Bundy reference because that is. Yeah. Yeah. You don't do that, bro. You're not a player, bro. You're a shoe salesman. <laughs> you know, bro, I did my thing, bro. I had that dunk sitting on those sixes in 06. Right. Come on, bro. All right, so y'all all wearing that. You blew it with me. I'm the only one. Y'all right, call each other oh, something? I did not realize that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Okay. That's, that's true. Right? Yeah. You know, I'm just and saying. it's the Navy. Yeah, it's the Navy. So, yeah, it's the Navy for sure. Okay. So, Tate, when it comes to you being a businessman and entrepreneur, what are some other maybe untapped ventures that you would like to pursue in the future? So um, right now, like I say, I do the merchandise. Y'all can still stream all my music. I got over 50 songs out, 13 music videos, multiple tapes. You know, you can get me right there. Got the merchandise that I'm still brewing on. But one of the things that I want to tap into is funding. So I mm -hmm. want to be the bridge in between getting people to where my situation was in order to get money. So what you do after I get you this funding is your business, but don't say that you didn't have a chance mm. to make yourself better. So one of the things I'm working on right now is with my mentor, getting a specific blueprint of how do I need to structure myself and my business to be lendable, to be um, affluent, because a lot of things that people don't tell you when they tell you they're gonna get you business credit and funding and yada, 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 you still gotta pay that money back, bro. <laughs> If I get you a hundred thousand, 
but you still got a ten thousand dollar mindset, you gonna blow the ninety, and mm -hmm. now you in a bigger hole than what you started in. Right. So what I want to do is, and I, and I strictly want to kind of focus on adolescence between fifteen to twenty five, because I want to stop people from making all the mistakes that I made in between those areas. Because if you really start. 15 is when I jumped off the porch and started doing illegal stuff to get money. So if I can tap into the brain of people, I'll be like, okay, if in a perfect world, if you got a magic wand, you take these steps, specifically how I say it, you can go from this to this amount of money. So that's one of the things that I'm working on to get those specific blueprints to like, okay, I know I meet these requirements. Tay told me if I meet these requirements, I can lock in with him. We could get this amount of money and then boom, you know, whatever you do after that, that's on you. All I can tell you how to do is start a merch company or put out some music. So I'm going to expand my expertise then, but these are the steps I got for now. Man. Anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. So, as y'all know, you got a simple question that we love to ask our esteemed guests. And one of the things about the to talk about is you already know when we created this podcast, we came with the notion of Cleveland <laughs> is not known for collaboration. But people like yourself are trying to change the narrative. How do you feel like we can further change the narrative of Cleveland not being a collaborative place? Um really I feel like people just need to get outside and talk and really get outside of their environment. So I feel like a lot of people don't collaborate because they are part of something that's bigger than them that they feel like if they go branch off and do this with this person, it's not going to work. But it might be somebody from that same group that you're looking at that's looking to collaborate with somebody like you. And one thing about Cleveland, um, I'm trying to say this the nicest way possible, but we're very trendy. So, you know, it's a lot of people that try. You know, shout out to all the people that try. But if we truly lock in and just start, somebody just got to strike the match. You know, strike the match, start collaborating, start getting on this side of town, start getting on this side of town, start collaborating with that person, start collaborating with that person. You know, once people see that y'all doing it and it's working, mm -hmm. more people will be willing to do that. But as for right now, you know, we had little powwows and get togethers and bring the city together, but nobody been consistent enough to make it a movement. You know, Cleveland, one of those places I always say, like, once we own something, we own it heavy. You know, we do got a heavy entrepreneurship presence which surprised me that we're not a collaborative city so you know start collaborating so people can follow it and leave that bullshit at home so that's another thing too you feel me i don't like to be places after 1 30 2 p.m there's nothing good happen after that if we start changing yeah a.m yeah yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you she's beneficial y'all but um yeah i don't like to be places at the one o'clock in the morning cleaning because you know you gotta be a certain type of way but you know if you leave the bullshit at home and start separating business from personal, which is hard mm -hmm. because relationships is relationships, then we'll be able to collaborate. So that's just it. Mm -hmm. Once people see it working. No, and I'm, I'm with you now. I feel like, hey, I'm going to say, it. I feel like we have to pull a spring and make that effort to be that. that movement. And I commend y'all for that, bro. And I, I ain't said enough. I said I was happy to be here with her, but I'm happy to be a part of this anyway. Because, like mm -hmm. I say, I like immortality and legacy and mm -hmm. now my voice on here forever so right. yeah. to be on the pull up experience it's a real experience y'all you know, like, <laughs> seeing the whole production and everything I'm inspired <laughs> don't be surprised you see me pop out with a podcast that's what's up do it we'll talk out the words yeah. we'll talk out the words yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to hear it yeah, yeah. absolutely absolutely so let me ask you this who would you love to collaborate in the future man because I know they're watching by the way yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah. Yeah. who would I like to collaborate with I know you've been a fish bag down there, you know what I'm saying? Oh, we already got ours popping. Okay, yeah. my bad, my bad, my bad. Right. She <laughs> teach me how to make that sleep money. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Dang. So I want to say, as far as real estate goes, I do want to collaborate with Beyond Win and okay. the King. You know what I mean? King, you know, you got tap in. I know you're watching. Yeah. You got to come correct to deal with them. So, you yeah. know, I want to get myself together and then you know i'll be able to say i got this for you i got that for you because they didn't put out so much game i just want to add value to them mm. you know what i mean mm. um i don't know how a collaboration would work because he already in his lane so heavy but shout out Vine from vcn clothing you know what i mean even if we don't do a brand collaboration i just would like to do something maybe a event or something but he he already full-fledged in it so y'all go get y'all vcn clothing um 
I don't really do music like I used to, so I can't really say who I collaborate with. But I'm willing to collaborate whoever collaborate with me, who want to collaborate mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. Whatever we can put together and bring to life to make our community better or you better or your people come better, on. come on with it. You know what I'm saying? I told y'all what I know how to do. You know, Let me know what you're missing, and we can figure it out together. That's awesome. So listen, uh, when it comes to legacy, we have a very well put together one by the time this is done. What would you like the legacy to be for you? And then what would you like the legacy to be for Out the Mud and all of your business ventures? Yeah, so it's pretty much everything. I'm going to keep saying it over and over again. I want to be a testament. I don't want to be no martyr. I ain't going to die for this. Oh, shit. there we go. Come on. But I do want to be a testament of you can start here mm. and go wherever you want to go. That's my life story. So people follow. That's going to be the story of my business. That's going to be the story of everything that I'm attached to. I'm an alchemist. I perform alchemy. This man mm. touched this and he made it into that. You know what I mean? So that's the legacy I want to leave for the family that's behind me. That's the legacy I want to leave for my business. That's the legacy. I'm pursuing period. I, Napoleon Hill died in the 70s. It's 2024, and we still talking about think and go rich. That's the type of stuff that I'm aiming for. You know, I want to be here once I'm gone. You know what I mean? I want to be here once I'm gone, no matter what it is. Like, dang, I still got this ODM shirt. RIP that, man. This is uh, uh, 3,000. Wait, what come after this? 2100? What come after this century? 2027. 20, 20, yeah. Okay. Um, it's 2100 and I still got this ODM merchandise. So, you feel me? I'm just trying to be here as long as I can because in 100 years, ain't none of this shit going to matter anyway. That's what right. And then lastly, because this has been a very inspirational and motivating episode. I don't want to go home, y'all. They about to kick me out. <laughs> no! We just, we not, just, we, yeah, we just come into a close. We ain't closed, yeah. <laughs> All good things got to come to a close. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. No, you're right. You're but right, it's you're been right. good. It's you're been right. good. You're and right. for those that are watching, I know that they agree. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you say if we had to take all of this and just kind of shrink it on down? What would be three takeaways that someone watching should be able to gather from tonight's episode? Okay, okay. So my first takeaway, I want to say anything is possible. Mm -hmm. If you think it's not possible, it's because you haven't done it yet, which means you've got an opportunity mm -hmm. to create a lane for yourself. Second, um, I want to say... You said I cuss, right? Oh. <laughs> Fuck what the people think about you, bro. They going to talk anyway. You know, I was one of those people. I was one of those. I was one of those people that dealt with that in my adolescence. It's like um, being that my father was a very busy man. He ain't really installed the values and the principles that I wish he would have. Mm -hmm. I'm a little more understanding now that I'm older, but. Back then, I really didn't have an identity for myself. So mm -hmm. one of the things I struggled with was all the people around me. I think this is the cool stuff, so I'm going to go do that. You know what I mean? And I end up being a follower at one point in time. My mom always told me you're a leader, not a follower. But if your influence is so strong, I didn't have anybody doing positive things in my life that uh, I wanted to live behind. Mm -hmm. Everybody that was doing bad was doing good. And everybody that was doing good, going to work, was doing bad in my eyes. And that led mm -hmm. to me doing other stuff. So, you know, I forgot what I was saying, but y'all heard what I said. <laughs> and lastly, um, watch everything on the pull-up experience, bro. It's a lot of gems and a whole lot of things that you can learn from just watching. You know, they clearly got the formula. There's millions and millions and millions of views. So people obviously coming back for a reason. So... Get to the pull-up experience if you can. It's really an experience. Yeah. <laughs> now, the most important question of the night. Come on, huh? Where can people find you? Where can we meet you? Where can we continue to support you? Absolutely. And or pull up for collaboration. Mm -hmm. you Follow me on Instagram at Tayodamud, T-A-E-O-U-T-D-A-M-U-D-D. Follow my business page, odm.merch. Tap in the odmmerch.com. Make sure y'all get on the email and SMS list so y'all can know, be the first ones to know whenever I drop. And then just look for everywhere, Keontae Smith or Tay Out the Mud. And y'all let me know in the comments, should I keep going on my stage name, Tay Out the Mud? Because it sounds cool, but I like Keontae Smith. It got a little flair to it. So <laughs> y'all let me know what's going on. 
look more bossier on these podcasts and whatnot because you know you can search either one of them and find me but they both got a little flair to them so yeah follow me man and my way for all my lazy people it will show be right notes. there. It'll you know, be right in the show sure notes. You watching up. this? It's right there. <laughs> Link in the description, man. Yes, there we go. That's right. We can't thank you enough, brother, because yeah, uh, awesome. like, 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 uh, Marquita said, you you pull up, bro, and I was like, we got opportunity, we got, we gotta get, we gotta get to you. So she like, asked me what was the takeaway too. Get outside. <laughs> I ain't know these people last year. Now we well acquainted. Why? Because I got out the house. Went to a, a place with like-minded individuals, and now we making progress and making things happen. So Absolutely. get outside, bro. Mm -hmm. It could be a million dollars a mile away from you, but all you keep doing is circling your block. So how you gonna get to it, bro? Right. And now, cause after the interview, we gonna we gonna see even more growth. You know, yeah. what I'm you did, y'all. Y'all lucky. Y'all can look back at this and say this man did everything. He, he said, said he was going to do advice. It's facts. the beginning of the journey. Y'all really yeah. caught me at a good moment. This before I take off and start acting like I don't know y'all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey, David Shan said something popped the podcast. So he's talking about his dad, how his dad was one of the wisest men who ever lived. And he said he never reported those things. And to me, this podcast, if nothing else, you know what I'm saying? This is a, just a journey of the journal of everyone in Cleveland doing dope things and whatnot. Yeah, and like man. I said, I'm going to love looking back like, dang, Tay said you're going to do this. This person, gonna do. everyone said they did what they're going to do. You know what I'm saying? So I, I love it. They say you, uh, when you do what you love, you never have to worry about it. Uh, you don't have to work for another day. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm still working though. I ain't Hold on, no, 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 no. I'm I'm gotta bad. see how they set it up, bro. They got a real production team. This ain't just a couple cameras and some ring like This is a real production. <laughs> well, yeah, we appreciate you, all that is. So, uh, y'all already know we gotta pay some bills, right? We gotta pay some bills. Uh, June. 22nd. 22nd. Yeah. Yes. Where are we going? Where are we going to be at? We are going to be at Severance Music Hall, y'all. The prestigious Severance Music Hall. And we're going to be celebrating excellence in the city of Cleveland. We're going to have the innovators. We're going to have the changes. We're going to have the creators. We're going to have the entrepreneurs showcasing. This is our Met Gala. This is our Grammy. This is our Essence Fest. This is for Cleveland. That's right. What's it called? It is the Pink Black House. That's right. That's right. And we have and we have to thank Miss Tenora Edwards and her amazing yeah. team for putting together this amazing event for the city. Mm -hmm. So listen, guys, if you have not got the tickets, please get them more now. Hit us up because I have a couple left myself. Uh it's gonna be a good time and we're gonna wanna be able to be in a room with all these amazing people doing great things. And then like Tay said, you will network the best, this is the place to do it. Right. Come on now, pick a black honors. Pull up. Pull up. That's yes, right. Now, we're going to be a modest <laughs> right now. We ain't got time to be playing with you. <laughs> My bro has been nominated as a finalist for Entrepreneur of the Year. And because y'all are here, I know you know that you need to be there in the room with us. <laughs> so, what I want you to do is head to pinkandblackhonors.com. That is pinkandbhonors.com and get your tickets. If for whatever reason you don't want to or you just want to hurry up and congratulate him early because we're going to claim early that he's going to win, <laughs> you can directly hit us up. He is at Not Your Average Agent on all social media platforms. You can also reach him directly at the pull up exp let us know if you need some tickets because i don't want to be the only one shouting and yelling and acting a fool i'm trying to do it full-fledged urban graduation style I, you know what I, mean? I, need, I need the energy so please come and bring it make sure you guys get your tickets yeah. on top of that june 20th june 20th we will be at launch arts yes. media now we, we talk about creators people who making it happen mm -hmm. a whole production team y'all yeah. i got a treat they're the team Ooh -hoo -hoo. I got a treat. We will be there pulling up on Launch Arts Media. Yes. We will specifically give y'all a front row seat to come and meet Steve. Okay. Come on now. I Steve! Know. Come on. But no, seriously, it's a wonderful vibe. You'll be able to pull up. You'll be able to socialize, have those conversations, mm -hmm. see the amazing different forms of art. Because a lot of times we underappreciate the artists within our city because we don't always acknowledge all the different things that they do. Now, 
if we don't do nothing else, we got to shout out our team. So before we do anything else, I'm going to start there. The first one, again, is Steve. We know Alienized because it's out of this world. The production is crazy. So he cannot be from Earth. And the fact that he be in like four places at once lets me know something's going on. Either way, we're going to do, you know, <laughs> Area 57, Area, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll do Area 51 episode later on in life. You know what I'm saying? But right yeah. now. We're going to let you know that you have to give him his props when it Absolutely. comes to anything as far as videography, photography, and all things that are just making you look good and commemorating your Absolutely. moments. This is the man you need to see. He works in direct partnership with Lady B. We love Green. And she brings a nice, dope perspective to anything that we have going on. Her angles, because y'all know I need them, and the lighting, because you know, me and my light skin twin don't always work together. So, we can if you play, need, we, can play. we are, it's giving angles hurt nobody um either way if you definitely need somebody to showcase all of your greatness these are the two that i absolutely yes, will mm -hmm. please don't try to get them on my day but i do understand <laughs> and i will share especially if you are paying what you're saying so next we have on a list my girl sam she is not here but if you were talking about curvy confident and we also touched so heavily on mental health today mm -hmm. which is necessary she is the one la young lady that you absolutely did stay in contact absolutely. with she does mm -hmm. have a couple of events she loves to do interviews y'all know when it comes to being outside right. she is our face and because she moves with so much grace and excellence we absolutely have to make sure that you get on her calendar yes because she is with them busy she gone right now and shout out to her make sure you have a safe trip we also want to shout out kami kwami love the brother love the brother come on cute yes. now if it's, it's funny, right? And, you know, we always talk about the power in blackness, but it's an amazing opportunity to always continue to support those who support you. If you are having any type of opening, business launches, you've been here and you feel like more people need to see you, you looking for that little brother stamp? Come on now. Come on, man. I got, I got invite right us out. out. Yeah. <laughs> Come and invite us out. He going to pull up on you. We going to make sure that it's an experience. So you make sure that you always give him great service. Absolutely. Um, Because we operate, we support excellent businesses that just happen to be black. You know what I'm saying? Not just black businesses. So absolutely. Oh, make sure that, that you yeah, perform your excellence because we absolutely are going to showcase and shout you out. Like you said, you can have five great reviews. Or 10 not so great. So it's on you. But uh, absolutely, we're going to come and get that Love the Brother experience and stamp. Moving on, we have Brittany. Beauty told all things beautiful and not so beautiful in the process, right? Mm -hmm. Now, one thing about her podcast is she is part of the pull-up experience. And though she graces yeah, our stage, she also has her own. So when it comes to love, finances, entrepreneurship, and all of the great things, um about them and the funny stories behind how to navigate through the not so amazing time. She is one for putting those out of people and helping to highlight the way through because the pathway is there, right? So you got to make sure that you first tune in and tap in and go and follow and subscribe to Beauty Toad. That is B-E-A-U underscore T-E-A because they're spilling the T underscore Toad, <laughs> T-O-L-D because we going to say it every single time. <laughs> Make sure you guys continue to support. Now, I know y'all see a different little background. We're trying some different things, but man, we've been hardly home, but always repping to you no, guys with no, no, no. my sis, Nakia Hudson. Now, if y'all are looking for a vibe, whether it be wine slushies outside on the patio, a cute little date where it's just the two of y'all, some charcuterie, a great um, <laughs> hostess, that yeah, is how you say that. Right. Um, God bless you. I know. And you can't tell me, but I'm going to work on it. Either way, um, whether you're into sweets or dry, don't know the difference. She will educate you and give you something different to do. Whether it's pre-game, post-game, or your date for the night, you mm -hmm. definitely want to make it to two you wants. That's 4425 Mayfield Road, South Dakota, Ohio, 44121. Wine Fest. Please, make yeah. sure you are pulling up to the Wine Fest. That's August 31st. Yes. I'm going to be there. That is in South Euclid. We'll they are doing an event. Yes. We'll be there. It literally lit. Um, <laughs> it will be at the South Euclid Food Truck Park. That's that area right kind of behind yep. that uh, McDonald's off of mm, Green and Mayfield. Green and Mayfield, yes, ma'am. What is going to happen is they are collaborating with the Ford Bistro, one of our favorite places. Come on, y'all. And right, they are home. bringing the food, <laughs> wine, and vendors outside. Is Come man. on. I'm so excited and so ready, so proud of both of them and all that they continue to do. So when you want to be in the right atmosphere with the right people, a safe environment, but also doing something fun, right? This is the place you want to be. Again, our pull-up game strong. So if Come you really now. are trying to get in contact with us in a direct contact where you can 
you know, buy me a drink like T-Pain. This is where I need you to be at. <laughs> Next is my bro, Brandon, Entrepreneur of the Year. Big and Black Honor. I'm claiming it early. Um, Alexa Play already won by Man. Oh, this is my big bro, the co-founder of the Pull Up Experience, both podcasts and events. He is known for being consistent and helping those who are looking to help themselves. He not only um, is great with networking, but he is phenomenal with support in whatever re way that you might need that to be. So don't take advantage, but absolutely <laughs> come and pull up on my bro. Uh, as you all know, he also is not your average agent. And we say that because he's not the average sales agent when it comes to real estate. Whether you are looking to buy, sell, do some other creative financing things. He's definitely got you. And if you don't feel like you're ready, again, this pull-up game is strong. So he absolutely will help you with your credit repair and all things um, when it comes to just building real estate and building yourself specifically. So thank you for that. That's the last time I said that. So make sure y'all put that up. <laughs> I might cut it before y'all even see it. Either way, make sure y'all continue to support my bro and all that he says, all that he posts, all that he does. Um, with that being said, we also got myself, Beneficial Bay, helping yeah. entrepreneurs just, that are starting or stagnant to start, launch, or grow their business. Specifically, I hope you get out your feelings and in your bag. So we do business and relationship parallels. We have some fun sometimes. Yeah. Uh, definitely give some tough love, even though I'm loving you down. Um, and that's pretty much it. Last people I got to shout out for sure are you guys, the Come viewers. On. We would be nothing without you. So we love y'all. Thank you for every comment, share, like, subscribe, yes. repost. Y'all come through every time, and I love, 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 and appreciate you all. We are on the road to, what, 300 episodes now? We're the past 200. Yeah, we, we have 225. 225. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> That's a blessing, and it's only a testament to how amazing you are. Thank y'all awesome. for pulling up to us and helping us to really showcase the amazing people in Cleveland, because we always say we're Cleveland and LeBron and both of us, and as y'all <laughs> see, episode after episode after episode, there are some amazing Amazing people, people here doing Absolutely. some amazing work. So, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. Please come again and bring a friend. <laughs> um, did I miss anything? No, you got it. I right. think exactly. Like, man, per usual. Per usual. That <laughs> mind, man, is still trapped. Yeah, no, they are easy to brag on. I got a great Yeah, she can go group. hands down. Yeah, I got a great group. So, for sure, they're easy to brag on and remember. They're, they're unforgettable in all ways. So, I love y'all for sure. I call my new brand ambassador, y'all. <laughs> hey, I ain't hey, talking no more. That's right. I ain't talking no more. Talk to my kids. I ain't talking no more. I ain't talking no more. No, that's real. We can't close no better than that. I finally got some props, too, y'all. I'm feeling it. I'm definitely feeling myself today. So, without further ado, I love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in, and bye. See y'all. Pull up. Pull up. <laughs>